Hey, y'all. Hope you're doing well and having a great week. Um, thanks so much for your patience. Um, fall break was wonderful, but then um, it ended with a lot of sick kids. So I apologize that I'm getting to these folders um, a little bit later than I'd hoped. Um, I'm grading your essays and really excited about what you've written and be on the lookout for your rubric feedback. I mean, if you have any questions, um, please don't hesitate to reach out. It's really important to me that you guys understand those concepts and that you get clarity and where your grade came from. And so please, please, please do not hesitate to reach out to me so that we can talk through any issues that you might be having. Okay, so we're gonna take a little pause um, from writing and we are gonna jump into a literature unit. And for the next two weeks, we are gonna be talking about a play, The Enemy of the People. Um, the Enemy of the People uh, used to be a book by Henrik Ibsen, and um, it is now a translation into a play by Arthur Miller. Um, it's really engaging and just really poses a lot of great questions about things that we see um, even today. And so I'm excited to jump into this with you um, and really unpack it over the next couple of weeks. So why do we need literature? And um, this is an age old question. History is not only a gateway to the past, but it's suggestive of our present and the future. Within every time period lies different people and within them, there are different stages in our ever growing culture. Each individual before was a product of their own time. And as a species, we evolve every day. And without that time stamp that literature gives us, we would know nothing about our past or the people um, who came before us. So literature allows us as readers to take a step back in time and we learn what life was like on earth um, from those who came before us. We get a better understanding of culture and we have a greater appreciation of the past. We learn through the ways that history is recorded in the form of manuscripts and speech and even the characters themselves. And we're able to step into those characters and we hear their perspective. And sometimes it even makes us view the world a little differently. So when we think about what impact that that has on our lives and the impact of literature in modern society is undeniable. Literature acts as a form of expression for each individual author. And those books mirror society and allow us to better understand the world we live in. Um, I tell my kids all the time when we have opportunities to read books, um, we learn about different people and we learn about different places. And somehow that gives us um, a greater understanding of who we are. Um, it helps us realize that we're really not much different than the people around us. I mean, it also gives us perspective of areas that we need to grow in and areas that we have the capacity to change about our own lives. Literature is a reflection of humanity and a way for us to understand one another. By listening to the voice of another person, we can begin to figure out how individuals think. I believe that literature is important because of its purpose and in a society which is becoming increasingly detached from human interaction. I'm sure a lot of you have this either in your hand right now or sitting right beside of you. Um, novels create conversation. And so that's what we're gonna be doing over the next couple of weeks. I'm hopeful that this play will cultivate really, really good conversation amongst us. So let's talk about the enemy of the people. Um, in a research class, we often talk about the truth and what the truth means. Um, how do we know what is truth? How do we question what we think we know? And how does that change and impact our lives? An enemy of the people is going to cause us to ask these great questions as we seek to understand the truth in the midst of a man's ethical and moral challenges in his small Norwegian community. So to give you a little bit of background, the town in which the play is set has built a huge bathing complex that is crucial to the town's economy. Um, so if you think about uh, where you're from, um, if you're from the charitable area, Carolina Freight used to be a huge complex for your community's economy. Um, if you're from West Lincoln, farming is really the, the heart of uh, that economy. Um, Gastonia is a lot of thriving small businesses and used to be 
um, even the mall areas. And there used to be plants and there still are a lot of plants in Bessemer City and Gastonia. Um, so we have these systems and these things that help facilitate uh, economic growth in our communities. Dr. Stockman, a character of the book, um, or the play, has just discovered that the baths draining system is seriously contaminated. Um, and this bathing system is something that people are actually swimming in. They are in there. He alerts several members of the community, including Hofstad and S. Laskin, um, who are leaders in this community and receives generous support and thanks for making that discovery to save the people's health in that community. However, the next morning, um, he gets a message from his brother, who is also the town's mayor, and tells him that he needs to retract those statements. So this play shares the in and outs of the moral and ethical conflicts uh, that Dr. Stockman finds himself in as he has these discussions with these men in the community um, and the questions of what is right and what is wrong and where does the economy take place over ethical and moral issues and when does it not? So we're going to talk about a few themes um, over the next couple of weeks, and that will include truth, family, media and news, a man's moral compass, community, health, leadership, the government, and so many more that you will probably discover um, as you read and interpret things on your own terms. So guys, what I want to do now is I want to draw your attention to the actual discussion board page this week. If you'll give me one second. Okay. So here you can see um, in your blackboard. So what I'm doing is I have uh, this lecture is of course going to be a uh, right above the enemy of the people. But if you click on this, the whole play is here for you. So I don't expect you to um, buy anything or go out and get it. It's right here for you in a PDF format that's very easy to read. And then each act has its own discussion board. And I want you to pay close attention to what I'm asking for. So uh, this discussion board, discussion board act one, uh, you will have to read pages one through 35. And then I've given you questions each week and those questions are the same. Um, they're no different. And the reason why is I want you to think in terms of theme and character and what does this mean? Um, these are just very basic ways to really cultivate conversation as you really embark on discussing literature. So for your discussion board act one, your initial response to these questions is going to be due Sunday, October 30th. Um, these are 400 word minimum responses based off of these three questions. Um, what I want to point out to you is there is a requirement that you have um, at least two direct quotes from the play to support those answers that you're giving. Um, I don't expect you to do a work cited or anything crazy like that. The only thing I ask is that you put it in quotations with the page number that you got it from so that your peers can go back and look at it as they're responding. So again, your initial post um, is going to be 400 word minimums. Um, and then the following Wednesday, November 2nd, you should respond to a course mate using 200 words. For those responses, you do, you're do you not required to have direct quotes in your responses. Please keep in mind, your ability to cultivate conversation is where you're going to receive your grade. Um, I expect you to follow instructions, of course, but the depth of your answers and how critical you are and how well you answer these questions is really where your grades are gonna come from the next couple weeks. Um, you're required to do two postings, but you're encouraged um, to contribute even more than that. Um, please know that you're welcome. You do not have to respond to someone who hasn't been responded to. Keep a conversation going. Ask great questions. Um, facilitate conversation. That's the goal of this week. And then if you take a look, so that's for Act 1. And then for Act 2, this, the questions are the same, the requirements are the same, but the dates shift. If you'll notice for Act 1, your response to the course mate is due uh, Wednesday, November 2nd at 11.59 p.m. Well, for Act 2, your response is due 
Wednesday, November 2nd. So you have dual dates where you'll have a response due and also the answers for the next questions. So I expect you to be reading ahead. Um, it's kind of like a book club. You're contributing a little to this while you're also reading for the next uh, week. And then for the act three, uh, you're just like act two where your response is going to be due Sunday, November 6th. Um, your initial response for act three is due Sunday, November 6th. And then we'll wrap up all conversations um, the following Wednesday, November 9th. Um, the due dates are really clear for each act. So just make sure that you're looking ahead and that you're responding accordingly. Um, I want to make sure that you're putting in all of your words, that you're giving um, direct quotes um, when necessary for those initial responses and that you're responding to course mates. And again, guys, just remember the goal is to cultivate conversation. Um, you want these, uh, you want these to be meaningful and you want um, to challenge your peers and ask hard questions about the themes and the characters and even debate a little bit about, you know, is the protagonist always right? Is the antagonist always wrong? Um, are there questions of right and wrong when it comes to people's livelihood and their ability um, to put food on the table? And this play really asks all those great questions. And if you have any questions about this, do not hesitate to reach out to me. In the meantime, I will be posting another folder probably next week that will start unpacking your final paper. Um, and remember your final paper um, is going to lead to um, your final project, which is um, the final presentation that you will have to do orally. Um, and that will be done through a recording, um, either a recorded PowerPoint or through Zoom or YouTube. And I will send out uh, more specifics on those instructions in the upcoming weeks. If you have any questions as you're receiving feedback on your papers um, or as you're reading this play, if there are some questions that you have and you want to shoot to me in an email, I will be all over the, these discussion boards responding and asking questions and challenging you when you give uh, certain things uh, and certain answers. So I look forward to these great conversations and let's continue to make it a great week.